Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm from MLDA at Tripoli. Today, I'm going to give you a workshop on data visualization with Seaborn. So first, what is Seaborn? Seaborn is a framework or an API whereby we can draw a lot of kind of graphs. So why do we use Seaborn? We use Seaborn because it is quite similar to Matplotlib, so it is easy to use, but it's simpler than Matplotlib and also it has a style theme, so we, it simplifies the styling of Seaborn. So without further ado, let's start by uh, visiting the code that's, that I've prepared for our workshop. Okay, so first, let's start by importing the necessary library such as first it is seaboard and also pandas and numpy so we use pandas and numpy to load the csv file and also to do some processing on the data and we also need uh, to import matplotlib as well because we need matplotlib as a holder if we want to plot uh, many subplots in a, in the same time and also to adjust the size of the graph and also we need to import math because later we'll use it to count some values okay so first uh, we can set the styling of the seaborn by running this code which is sb.set and if we run this code we can uh, the help function pops up on the right side so we can see that there are some parameters here such as the context style palette fonts and font scale and so the context is the size Con the context tells us the size of the graph that will be drawn compared to the normal. So the default is notebook, which is the normal size. And then we have paper, which is smaller than the normal size, around 0 0.8 eight times. And also there are top, poster, which is larger than the normal. Next, there, are, there is the style parameter. And the default is dark grid, dark grid which is blue background with grids and also there are four, three other options which is dark which means it's without grid white grid which means white background with grids and also white which is white background without grids and the next parameter is palette which tells us the, the colors of the graphs that will be drawn and there are several options deep, muted, bright, pastel, dark and colorblind and we can test them by running this code as you can see, the bright is uh, represents bright color, and if we change to, for example, uh, deep, we can see different kind of color. So I'll stick with the first one, which is bright. Okay, next, let's start uh, processing the data. So first, let's load the data to a variable called data frame using pandas, and we will see the first five call, uh, rows of data and we can see there are uh, around 20, 24 columns on, on the data and almost all of them are numerical type of data but there are some uh, categorical data such as the state and also the customer service calls which is a uh, numerical but the value of the number doesn't tell us any not anything it's just a kind of value and also the last column which is churn is our target variable so it is binary it is either true or false okay so we can see by running this code that the type that most of the type is either integer or float okay let's close the right side first Okay, so first let's let's start with the visualization. So there are two kinds of visualization. The first there, which is univariate visualization and also multivariate visualization. And univer in univariate visualization, we only want to plot uh, one variable, one variable or one column at a time. So in univariate visualization, there are two kinds of variables, right? Which is quant either numerical or categorical. So first let's start with numerical features or numerical data so we will use the first kind of graph that we will draw is called distribution plot or in seaborn it's sb.distplot and this in this one we will plot the total international calls 
and it, as we can see, it will plot the uh, histogram as well as the uh, KDE or the kernel density estimation. And we can customize the graphs here, such as putting a rough graph, or we can customize the KDE, such as using check white uh, by writing the color such as here this one and so we can change the line width of the KDE and also we can also uh, change the customize the histogram by writing the style that we want to change okay so before we continue I want to tell you a way to save the graph so if you want to save the graph first run the the code that will draw the graph then you can run this code which will uh, save the graph into a file called output.png so if you want to change the name of the file just change this name of the file name okay so now let's only include the data frame that is numerical so that we can draw a graph of all numerical data so we can do that by running a for loop and also first we need to create the subplots in this case we have 16 uh, different date 16 different variables and we will draw a size of 20 by 20 and then we iterate over all the columns and run the code we can see here so it will plot 16 graph and each of the graph represents the different column data such as account length number of email messages yeah. and we have and we have uh, written the color as red green blue and yellow so that yeah so the first column will be red the second column will be green third column will be blue and the fourth one will be yellow and this this is where we use the math because we want to specify the index whereby the graph is plotted so we need to do a floor function here on the index because as the index increases we want to divide it divide it by four and then we need to floor it next let's move on to the second plot which is the box plot Box, box plot will tell, will tell you the distribution of the data, numerical data, and and we can also draw all the box plot for the numerical data. So we will draw again 16, 16 different plots, and this is how to interpret a box plot. So the the first line here represents the first quartile of the data which is Q1 and also the then there's the median here in the second line and the third line represents the third quartile which is the 75th percentile so then there is the whisker here which is uh, represented by Q1 Q in the the right one represents Q3 plus 1.5 interquartile range. So what is interquartile range? Interquartile range is the difference between Q3 minus Q1. And so the left one will be the Q1, which is this one, minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And so the data on the left side of the whisker line is, uh, we can call it outliers. So we can see that a large number of international calls is quite rare in our data. Next thing, we will see the filing plot. So filing plot is quite similar to KDE. So we can see. So we can see here the difference between a box plot and a filing plot. So in the filing plot, we can see the distribution of the data, while in the box plot, we can only see 
the different points in the data such as the Q1, median, Q3. Yeah, but in violent plot, you cannot see whether a data whether a data is an outlier or not. So here we I have I've put a graph showing the how to read box plot and also violin plot. Next, we'll move on to categorical data, and it is the category. So we plot. We will plot using a bar plot because we want the most usual thing of plotting a categorical data is by using count plot, which means we count the number of occurrences of the data. So in this case. We will plot a churn, and there are two possible values of churn, which is false and true. And we can see that, that the false value of churn is much more than the true value of churn. And we can also plot customer service calls, customer service calls, which have nine possible values. And we can see that the most number of customer service calls is around one or one and two. And the left and the churn chart vividly illustrates the imbalance in our target variable, which means the target variable is not so equal. There are more false values than true values. Next, we will incorporate a new a feature from Seaborn, which is called Hue, so we can uh, divide the data for one graph into several kinds of bar plots. In this case, we want to divide the customer service calls into two colors, which is blue and orange, and it's based on the churn value. So we have two bar graphs for each value in the customer service calls. Next, let's move on to a multivariate visualization. So first, let's draw a quantitative by quantitative graph and the first kind of graph that we want to look at is correlation matrix so what is a correlation matrix correlation matrix is a matrix whereby we can see the correlation between two different columns so it will be so it's, it will look something like this and if we look at this one it means the value here means the correlation between the uh, between the row and also the column so for example this value this one is the correlation between total if charge and account length yeah and as we can see from the correlation matrix between all the numerical data of the data frame we can see that there are a few data where the correlation is one which means that we can know we can know the data here given the other data so for example here to total total day charge is perfectly correlated with total day minutes so we by adding so even without the total day charge we can know the the total day charge by uh, calculating it using the total day minutes multiplied by a constant so actually by having the total day charge it doesn't give extra information so we can delete this column to reduce the data size and so here we will reduce the data size by dropping all the perfectly correlated columns and heat map can also be used to display a pivot table so how to draw a pivot table? We can use the uh, pandas function, which is dot pivot underscore table, and we will uh, specify here the x value will be the index, which is churn, and the uh, I'm sorry, the index, which is the y axis, is churn, and the x axis will be the columns, which is the customer service calls. And the value, which is the numbers to be plotted, will be the international plan, for example, in this case. And the up, the aggregate function, we just use np.count non-zero, which means we will count 
the number here will represent the non-zero values of the column. And then we, we specify here the, the figure size, which is the graph size of the graph. And then we draw here. Next, we will move on to another kind of graph, which is scatter plot. So scatter plot uh, will draw all the points in the graph without any line connecting them. We just plot the points. And so we need two different data. In this case, which is the x and y. And in this case, which is total day minutes and total nine minutes. And as we can see, they are quite scattered all around the place and it's quite uncorrelated at all. And the next thing, we can also add another uh, kind of data together in one graph by using a join plot. And in this one, we can plot a scatter plot as well as a, a histogram on above the graph. And actually, joint plot has a parameter called kind, which specifies the kind of graph to be plotted. And there are several kinds of data graph that we can plot. And we can see here, which there is scatter, rec, receipt, KDE, or hex. And in this case, we want to plot KDE. So it will be some smooth density function, which is some, it looks like this. It will be continuous rather than discrete like the scatter plot. If you use a rec, it will draw a scatter plot. But the difference is that it will put a line to find the line of best fit in the data plotted and then if you want to draw all variables against all all numerical variables against all numerical variables you can use uh, sb.pairplot and then you can also put the another variable as hue to differentiate to cut to differentiate the points using two different colors and in this case we will use churn but I won't run the code here because pair plot is very complex and it takes a lot of time to run the code. So we we just see the graph that has been run, the code that has been run before. And as we can see here, we can see the distri the different distribution of numerical data in the diagonal line, and we can see the distribution of uh, true churn and also false churn here. And in the other graph, we can see the uh, relation between different numerical data, such as this one, this one, yeah. And we can also see the different distribution depending on the churn variable. Next, we will move on to quantitative versus categorical data. So, in this case, we want to draw a linear model plot, but we want we don't want to draw the regular uh, the regression line so we write the fit right equals to false or we can just change the LM plot to a scatter plot which is the same and we will put some we will put the hue as churn here so we want to differentiate the points as blue and yellow depending on the churn and from here we can conclude that the distribution of true churn is a bit to the upper right which means the people who who are disloyal lean, uh, spend more time on the phone during both day and night compared to the normal customer. Next, we will move on to draw box plots, but we will draw a lot of box plots to and the different box plots will represent different uh, variables against the chart and we will use a for function to draw the graph so in this case we can see that there in most of the variables the, di the distribution of the true and false churn is quite similar but in around three variables we can see that the distribution of the true and false is quite different the three variables are the total day minutes which is this one, so the mean is a bit different. 
then there is the customer service calls which is this one so it has different distribution and also the number of email messages so in this case there are many outliers compared to the, the true value has many outliers compared to the false one next we want to examine more close close more closely on the total day minutes so we will draw the filing plot as well but in this case the filing plot does not contribute any additional information but our data as everything is clear from the box plot alone this loyal data tend to talk on the phone more which is shown in the difference in the median here the median of true is higher than the median in false and there is an interesting observation here on average customers that discontinue their contracts are more active users of communication services so perhaps they are unhappy with the tariffs so a possible measure to prevent churn could be a reduction in call rates so we want to analyze next we want to analyze a quantitative quantitative variable in two categorical dimensions at once and there is a suitable function for this which is called cat plot so the two dimensions are the customer service calls here and also the churn so we can use cat plot and specify the x value as the churn which is the this one this one is the x value and then we can uh, change the column depending on the customer service calls so the first column will be zero customer service call second column will be one service call then we can also use here call wrap to limit the number of columns and the next the next value of customer service call will be put on the second row and there is the height and aspect ratio so the height represents the height of the overall graph and the aspect ratio also represents the as the ratio between the length and the width and between the length and the height of the data that we want to plot so as we can see from here starting with four calls the total day minutes may no longer be the main factor for customer churn perhaps in addition to our previous guess about the tariffs there are customers that are dissatisfied with the service due to other problems which might lead to fewer number of day minutes spent on calls so the next one we will plot uh, categorical data versus categorical data and as we know that we can only plot count plot using categorical data so we will use count plot but with hue to represent another categorical data so for example here uh, customer service call and churn we will use the hue to differentiate the color on the count plot and an interesting observation will be the churn rate increases significantly after four or more four or more calls to customer service so yeah like round four the number of true and false is around similar and after that more customers uh, churn compared to the one who didn't churn and so let's next let's look at the relationship between churn and the binary features such as international plan and voicemail plan okay so next we will draw in uh, the correlate the relationship between churn and the binary features which is international plan and fo voicemail plan so an interesting observation is when international plan is enabled the churn rate is much higher which is the number of yes the number of yes the churn rate is almost 50 percent uh, while we do not observe the same effect in the voicemail plan as we can see here on the right side of the graph okay so we are done with the workshop and I hope that but after uh, watching the video you, you all guys can start to explore the, C, the different seaborne functions and I hope this workshop is useful for all of you thank you